Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to another podcast. I'm out on my local reservoir today, fly fishing for pike. It's a nice, cool, overcast day, a bit of breeze. We've had a bit of hot weather recently, so I've not really wanted to have a go at the pike until it's just cooled off a bit. But it's lovely and cool today. Perfect conditions, really. Um, all the banks are covered in grass now, and the rushes and the trees are all green and lush looking uh, and what I'm actually looking for today is to fish in and around some of the the weed beds and the underwater vegetation where I'm hoping there might be a little jack pike or even a bonus perch just waiting to ambush my fly as it strips as I strip it over the top and the gear I've got today I've got a nine foot and nine weight rod um, a short taper um, floating fly line and then I've got a five foot sinking poly leader and about three or four foot of 20 pound fluorocarbon and then 12 inches of uh, wire trace on the end and then the fly I'm using is a little shimmering perch it's about six or seven inches long size 4.0 hook barbless and it, uh, it actually imitates a little perch. It's not too heavily dressed, this fly. It's relatively thin, um, which I kind of like because as though a nine weight is okay, it's just on the edge of being able to cast it. So I don't really want a really big bushy fly. Um, otherwise, I'd be really needing a 10 weight for that. So I've got the wind coming to my left. Um, I can see some weed and bits of grass and underwater vegetation sticking out around me. So I'm going to pull off some line. Uh, get a cast out and see what happens. Not casting too far to start off with. Reasonable gentle strips and then speed it up a little bit and just have a bit of a play see if we can get a take. There is, as you can probably hear, a bit of wind cutting through the valley here. Um, what's the, the reservoir here is probably two or three hundred feet across. It's a long, thin reservoir. Um, lots of trees all around. I can see the down wall at one end and the sailing club with the little boats on the left hand side. And there's a, uh, not many people out today, which is kind of nice, really. This, I think it's just a bit of a cooler day got the place to myself really. Plan is today just to have an hour or so and fish up this bank. We're walking up the bank every few minutes I'll just cover all the wee beds and see if we can nail something. I have had pike out of here on the fly on this stretch of bank several times before so I know they do frequent here. It's just enough this um, this perch imitation, just enough to cast on an iron weight. Any the dressing was any fatter, it would be uh, just over the edge and just be too hard to, to cast. Right. Right, let's take a few paces. So, get other gear I've got with me today, which is uh, essential. I've got a uh, unhooking mat on my rucksack on my back, clipped on. I've got a huge landing net um, and some long nose pliers as well. And that means if I if I do get into a fish, I'm fully equipped to deal with it. Moved up a bit now. There's a nice ripple on the water actually. It looks perfect conditions for fishing really. Let's just have a look at this fly, check it's moving through the water. Yeah, not brilliant actually. I think it's a I think the fly might just need a bit of TLC. Let's have a little look here. Yeah, the uh, the fibres are just twisted around the hook slightly there. Let's 
let's try that. That's better. This is the. Uh, this would be the first time I've been out after the pike this this year. I've not got out and fished this year and, and done as many podcasts as I would have liked to. I've been busy with my um, busy guiding, a lot of tuition and um, guiding this year, and um, also a few other things as well that's kept me off the water. So it is nice to be back out again. A bit of weed on it. I can hear the kill use in the distance, just making a racket. Right, I've stripped that back. Let's grab the old landing net and take a few steps up the bank. And you can probably hear the wind's a little bit gusty today. Just getting some gusts of wind every so often. But it's uh, just on the right side, really. It's not too heavy, that wind. So, And it's coming in the right direction for casting, too. I've caught some... Uh, I've caught some lovely pike on the fly over the years. But there's... And I caught lots of perch, but I've, I've never caught a, a, what I call a, you know, a really big perch on the fly. And I've never caught a zander. And that's, I mean, there's no zander in here. Uh, and I tried to, um, to get out for a couple of days and target some zander last year. That didn't happen. So it's still a species that I, uh, I want to catch on a fly rod. Oops. Right, a couple more paces up. I can see there's the kind of underwater vegetation here is swaying around in the current and looks like it's spreading out. So that's the kind of place I'd expect a, a pike to just be lying in amongst the vegetation, waiting for a fish just to unsuspectingly swim over it and then up it comes and ambushes it. Looks like we might be in for a bit of a shower actually. Very peaceful reservoir here. Not a lot of road noise around it. And just the sound of the cattle and the sheep and the kill ewes. It does get very, very busy with the joggers here. Lots of people run around here as well, but the weather just seems to have kept them away today as well. It seems to be a, a growing area fly fishing for pike, I would say. Um, I think a lot of people, they, when they've been fishing for trout for a good few years on a fly rod. Excuse me, just gonna cast this. When they've been fishing for a good few years on a fly rod for trout, I think it seems to be a natural progression is to target species like pike and saltwater fly fishing, uh, bass and pollock, and then obviously salmon as well. And it's not, for me anymore it's not really the species as such it's the it's the method that's the the fun bit oh, i've just picked up a bit of weed there let's pull this in and sort the fly out again i've experimented over the years a lot with different wires for the wire trace um, i've spent a lot of money trying out various different brands and i've been through them all i've been through I've been through them all. I've been through the ones you crimp. I've been through uh, knotable wires. You name it, I've been through it and tried it. I've never really found one that I like. And then I stocked some in there, in, in the shop. Um, I thought I'd stock some. And um, I just thought I'll try this. It's a really cheap one. I, I don't often talk about brands on the podcast because I try to keep it independent. But it's sure catch wire. Um, and it's a melt knot wire, so you can just tie a knot and then twist and melt it to secure it with a cigarette lighter. And you know what? It's my 
out of all the ones I've tried, it's probably the cheapest and it's my favourite by an absolute mile. Oh, I had a little take then. That was definitely a knock. Just check the flight. Yes. Um, yeah, unbelievable. I think it's 2 99 for a spool. And it's just brilliant. It knots really nicely. You can melt the wire coat in just to secure the tag end of the knot. And I don't have to use any extra swivels or clips or anything that's going to give me any unnecessary weight and um, it's just perfect so just shows you sometimes I think with things like wire you can try almost a little too hard to find something that sounds fancy but you just want something simple that does the job And the reason I um, the reason I use the sinking poly leader, it's the same very similar setup I use when I'm saltwater fly fishing, but it will get the fly down a bit, so it just gets it down a touch. But the reason I like it is it offers control. So if you're um, if you're fishing in the sea when there's lots of swell, or or as it is today, there's plenty of wind and there's quite a lot of chop on the surface. What I don't want is the, the floating line just being blown round in a big bow and, and pulling the fly around before I've had a chance to strip it and retrieve it back. So I just find with the sinking poly leader, it just anchors it on the water and it, it just gives me that, that bit of control that really helps. Right, let's strip this one back and then I think we'll move up the bank some more. Right, let's move up, shall we? Don't seem to be many um, geese and ducks around today as they normally is here. They normally come and say hello. I'll see what I'm up to. Must be off somewhere else today. I'm just looking out over the reservoir. I can see a, a lone boater. It's used as a, a practice for uh, rowers on here. And there's a lone rower coming up the reservoir straight into the wind. That's hard work, that is. Oops. Yeah, doing a roll cast with a big fly, pike fly on isn't necessarily the easiest thing to do. Right, I'm just coming up to the side of one of these big underwater weed beds now, so I'd like to find a spot where I can actually work the fly around it. Just keep picking the fly up and just straightening it out. These um, these pike flies are notorious just for getting a little twisted around the hook. So it's always good every four or five casts just to bring them in and just tweak the fibres and make sure that when they're in the water they've got a nice life lifelike movement. Oh, he's doing pretty well, the rower there, into the wind. He's made some good ground since I last saw him. He's way past me now. So I have a one little pluck so far. All right, I'm just going to toss it down the left-hand side of this weed bed. I'm just trying to judge where the weed bed ends. Probably about there. That's good. Right, let's walk up and I don't want to cast through the weed bed because I'm just going to end up snagging here. So I'm going to walk up to the other side of it and try and get a cast almost out adjacent to it. This wind's just picking up a bit. about right. I 
There's another rower coming up in his lovely white boat. He's into a bit of weed now. Let's pull this fly in and de-weed it. Everything's looking so green this year, you know, the trees and the the grass, there's no dry brown grass, it's all very lush and green with all this rain we've had. And the water levels here are excellent for the time of year. It's pretty much full to be honest, which for summer is, uh, is good going. I know that, imagine that water companies are very happy this year to get to July and have reservoirs at this full. And this wind's just starting to swirl a bit, making it let's take care with the cast. I don't want to put a pipe fly in the back of my head. Certainly a workout this with a nine weight. Temptation is when you've cast in a pipe fly to try and start to sling it. And just like fly casting when you're fishing for trout, it's you still need that slow, smooth acceleration just to load the rod properly. There we go. That's better. Just getting it tracking down the side of this weed bed now. Looks like it's just where I want it to be. I'm probably getting... 30 or 40 feet out on the cast here, which is enough really for these big flies. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm targeting fish that are close in, or hopefully close in, just sat amongst the vegetation, that's the idea. You're not gonna get much further with this outfit really. Oh, big gust of wind there. Move up this bank. It's a funny colour earth here. It's a it's like a clay like it's a orangey clay. Um, and the, they've got the orange clay and the contrast of the green grass. It's quite pretty actually, even the earth is quite pretty. Uh, looking into the distance of the reservoir, I can see the rowers have turned round now and they're, they're on the way back down with the wind this time. Uh, should be a bit less effort for them. I guess that's the way I'd like to do it if I was rowing. You want to go into the wind first, put that effort in and then be rewarded by having the wind on your side on the way back. That's a longer cast. Let's let this one sink a bit more. It's a bit deeper here, so let it get down. And just a few twitches in. Just want to make this fly work a bit like it's almost like an injured fish. Just pulsating in the water speed it up a bit. Oh, wind's coming now. Yeah, the reservoir is grey looking, it's a mirror image of the sky, just a, looking down the looking down the reservoir to where the damn wall is, it's almost the sky and the reservoir, the grey and the blue just merge into one and it's, it's difficult to differentiate between where the sky finishes and the, the reservoir starts. It's, very nice. Let's move up this bank a bit more. I'm going to have to move up quite a bit more actually because there's a lot of trees or bushes just in my way on my back cast now. So I need to skirt around them. And then I've pretty much fished out this section of bank here that's accessible to me. Um, as to what to do now after this, I don't know. I might... I might head down to the neck end where the um, river comes in and actually put on a smaller fly that I can cast a bit better and see if I can work it around some of the reed beds there, either for pike or perch. I know there's quite a few perch down there. I'll see, I'll fish out this section here and then uh, have a think about what we're going to do.
I've never actually seen anyone else ever fly fishing on this water. There's only me and the uh, bailiff knows me quite well on here so he always comes and says hello. I guess you stand out when you're the only person who fly fishes. Most of the other pike anglers on here seem to fish with dead baits, particularly through the winter. I see the odd lure angler but not many. I have to confess, I, I never seem to have much success with the, with the fly through the winter months. Spring and summer and autumn are, seem to be far more successful when the pike are hanging around the weed beds and you can get to them. Oh, our wind's getting up now. I'm just going to let this gust of wind pass through, that's too much to cast in that. Right, I'm going to wander up a bit further. I'm going to wind in, I think, and have a wander. All right, grab that huge net. Massive. <laughs> and then walk up. Right then, here's what we've done. So I've took off the great big pike fly. Um, and I've put on a little perch special, which is about... Two inch fly, it's white and red, and it's a great fly for catching perch, but it will also pick up some bonus jack pike as well. And um, I've left the wire trace on for that purpose, but the reason I've done that is that I'm gonna now fish the neck end here, and it's very tight casting, so I need to roll cast, and that big old pike fly just won't roll cast too big. So um, this allows me just to put out a nice roll cast and fish out amongst these weed beds, so. Right, nothing around that weed bed, so I'll wind in and head further down to the neck end, and I'd like to get, if possible, get down right where the river comes in. Well, I've just, I've got my shorts on and I've come right down to the neck end and I've just had to wade through, get through a load of nettles. And I have to say, they have stung me fairly badly. Right, well I've made it down to the neck end and now it's just, can I actually get out to get a cast in? Or is it gonna be too muddy? <laughs> hmm. I don't think I can get a cast in there. I think it's too, too muddy to get out there. Looks ripe for a perch though. I could just get out there and have a cast, but I can't get close enough to it. Maybe head further up the river. It's a shame. I uh, I can't I can't go get close enough to the water to have a cast. It's it's um very shallow, and muddy, and it uh, means I can't just get to where I need to be. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to have a walk back now. And... Right, never mind. Let's try and get back up without going through those nettles. No, I'm going back up through the nettles by the looks of it. If I'd only got my wellies on, I put my walking boots on today. If I'd just got my wellies on, I'd just be able to get through there. Hey, well, it's a bit of an adventure. And lots of wild mint here underfoot. As I tread back through it now, I can really smell the mint. It's very pungent. And that's the pleasing bit. The next bit after the mint, is the nettles and I've got three quarter length shorts on and uh, yeah 
making it a little bit interesting to say the least. Here we go. Ow, 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 ow. It's like being 12 year olds again and trying to get through the nettles to fish, stinging yourself silly on a summer's day. Ah, right, back along the path. I'd love to get down here for a cast, but I cannot see a way down. I found a little cutaway, it's not ideal. But I can certainly get a roll cast out here and uh, see if anything's lurking just in the shallows. Still got the little perch special on. Let's drop that out and then we'll give it a twitch. Yes, here we are. We're in. Oh, we got here, little Jack Pike. Perfect. Lovely. He's only a small pound or so. Lovely, and he's away. He's got lovely little jack pike, probably a pound or two, but very close in, just off the wee beds, exactly where I expected him. Smashing. Right, let's try and get another one now. Perfect. Just perfect. I was hoping at first it'd be a nice big perch, but hey ho. He was only, what, two foot off the bank, that fella. And I was stripping quite quick as well. It's, uh, it's quite a nice spot here. I can actually just cast parallel to this weed bed. And it's there's a lot of cover next to trees as well. It looks prime. Uh, prime for little pike and perch here. Oh, and another take. Ah, uh, we found some fish at last. That was an oops. That was a yeah, a good old pull. That one. Exactly the same spot I cast into as well. There. Really good pull. Oh, there's a big old pike here. Now what it's doing is a big pike just swum past me, taking the almost gulps of air. I don't know if it's sick, but. Uh, it's come past me, gulping air off the surface, and then disappeared. How strange. Well, I've definitely found some fish anyway. I had a, a good take, I've had a pike, and I've seen a, a big pike coming past me, but it was behaving very strangely. Very strange, can't get over that fish. I wonder what I was doing. I wonder if it was uh, I wonder if it was a bit sick. 
Now I'm stripping this right over the weed bed now. I picked up a bit of weed on that cast. So I'm getting this roll cast out just fine and it feels nice and fishy now. It feels like there's a chance of another take or two, so stick it out a bit longer. It's a little cutaway in the bank and almost I'm enveloped by trees above me and into the sides as well, but there is um there's a looks perfect here. And I can just almost do a little jump roll cast just to tap it out and just because I've changed flies to this smaller one it's enabling me to do it now. Nice bit of fishing. I think I'll have another five minutes here and then have a potter back see if there's anything else I fancy on the way back and then probably call it a day for today. Nice to get one more. Oops wind's getting up again. Let's go back to this little weedy bit here. Right, I'll make this the last cast. Another fast strip over the wee bed and then I'll uh, start wandering back. Oh! There's that big pipe back again here. It's uh, come up and taking gulps off the surface. I think it's sick. If you're looking at it, it looks a bit. Uh, looks like it's got a bit of fungus on the back. I don't want to catch that, so uh, I think it's a poorly fish. I'm going to actually pull my fly out here. I don't want to attempt catching that. It'll do it no good to be caught. So I'll leave that one in peace and uh, head back down. It might. Uh, it might get better over time, but doesn't need to be caught that fish. Right, back up. Right, I think we'll have uh, one more little dabble down here. Just off these weeds here and just see if I can put one in parallel to the bank round the trees. And then that'll be, be done for the day. I've often had a, when I've been fishing for pike, casting parallel to the bank, so just two or three feet out seems to be very effective, especially in these conditions here. Yes, we're in again. What have we got here? I'm hoping this is, oh, it's off. That was a perch. That was a nice perch. Not huge, but it was a it was a pound plus. Oh, it's annoying. I'd stripped it right over the weed bed and uh, to grabbed it. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Still thinking about it. <laughs> it really is a fantastic uh, way of fishing this. It's one of my favourite with these. It's a fly that 
is going to take pike, is going to take perch, and just occasionally a chub. Um, so you really don't quite know what you're going to catch. And I think, for me, at this stage of my fly fishing life, that's kind of what I'm looking for. I don't really want to know that it's going to be a this or that. I want to enjoy the unexpected and just potter about. Well, I think we'll call it a day. That's been a lovely morning's fishing. What, I've had two or three good takes, lost a nice perch, caught a little jack pike. Beautiful morning to be out, so I'm a happy man. As ever, thank you so much for listening. Um, to find out more about our fly fishing tuition, please visit us at www.peaksflyfishing.com um, or to buy our range of premium flies online, including all the pike flies and flies for perch, visit us at shop.peaksflyfishing.com. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.